Whoa! It's in the armpit. No! Hello, welcome to the Baja Automotive Garage. We have a 2001 Outback here with a mileage count of 182,677. Got a lot of lights on the dash here, check engine light, flashing brake light. We're gonna be using the Think Diag 2 to take a look at her. Vin scan. cleaned up the old beard so I hope it's not in camera today let me know if it is yeah, 16 pen North America mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to health report. Okay, cool, there we go. Ooh, noises. ECM. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Read fault code. MRI's code. T0700. Tells me to look at my transmission. Got one code in my transmission. Read fault code. Current. Wait, back. History. Lock up duty solenoid, circuit low. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to use Shopkey Pro and we're going to try and follow the diagnostic procedures for this. And I do like Shopkey Pro because it has a couple of nice things. I got my pencil here. What I really like about uh, pulling up codes on Shopkey Pro is on the home screen, it gives you the most common concerns in these columns here. So first off it says the most commonly thing looked up for this vehicle is we got brakes, rotors, headlights, wheels, battery, spark plug. That's pretty cool. Over here at the DTCs we have uh, post catalytic converter codes, we have intake valve codes, camshaft codes, a P420 code, uh, top symptoms that the car comes in and then if you're following along we have top lookups all very good information especially if you're in the used car realm that's really nice to see so on the search header it lets us type in codes here so we have a P2764 drawing pin out here. It's very important to understand that these are two different columns. The one over here on the left, these are search results for P2764. This one over here, this is just related jargon that it could be. 
So don't get lost over here. The only time you want to use stuff on this side right here is if there's nothing over here. Using the left column, let's click on the link. And now it takes us to a new dashboard. These dashboards are AI generated based on the information that you looked for. So keep in mind that sometimes you may not get nine tiles to look at. Uh, this one has 12 tiles to look at, actually. Some of them may only give you three or four. Don't get discouraged if you don't get all the information and don't get overwhelmed if you see too many tiles. One that I always like is TSBs. I like to see that. Again, top repairs for this code, uh, causes and fixes for this code, uh, manufacturer specifications. You see where I'm going, read all the headers, OEM testing procedures, guided component testing, uh, component connectors. All right, we're going to click on each one of these. So let's approach this as if we weren't trying to guess. Uh, let's see what we got for TSB. Okay, we do have a TSB out there, a 16-131-20. The R at the end uh, indicates that it's been revised, which means that it's updated. It's good to know. And if we open this up, they've already highlighted our code here. They're telling us it's for these applicable, these applicable vehicles, which is pretty much the start of CVTs in these vehicles. Results. Let's see what top repairs are. Well, the mileage on this vehicle was pretty high. It was almost 140,000 miles, and it's telling us that there were 179 recorded repairs for valve bodies on that instance. And all this information that you're seeing right here, this is actually coming from authorized repair centers, like dealerships. Got some causes and fixes saying that a uh, P2764 has been directly related to valve bodies, filters, control modules, the body seal, clutch solenoids, torque converters. So we're already narrowing down some things to look at. That's, that's very good information, especially if you're not a Subaru person. Let's go to specifications. All very good right here that I like. Nothing in here that we're going to need today for this video. So let's see what OEM testing gives us. Hey, a flow chart. I like flow charts. Okay. I buy as. <laughs> what I mean by I like them, I mean I like to ignore them or throw them away. So let's go here. First thing is. We get a simplified wiring diagram. It's beautiful. No color coded wires, but we can figure it out because they gave us the plugs to look at with the orientations that we need. Really do like that. And if you're new to reading wiring diagrams, let me give you a couple of tips. Okay, first tip number one is look at your lettering. This plug here starts with a T. It's indicating that it's part of the transmission harness. Uh, I got one over here, starts with a B, it's part of the body harness, and then if we had an E, guess what, engine harness. That's how Subaru likes to label their harnesses, and I've seen some similarities across other manufacturers. Important thing, an important thing to note uh, right here at this connection you'll see that it's it's labeling both sides of the plug, the male and the female. So B11, okay, that's gonna be the male side. And T4, it's the female side. I think we can move on from that. What do we gotta do, see here, Step one, check your harness. And it's telling you to check it from, it's telling you to check it from Bonnie Hardest Connector, plug B54, pin 26 to chassis ground. This guy, 
this guy right here on that plug and it wants us to go to ground what do we let's this is why I always like to tell people take that information and put it on the simplified wiring diagram and think about what they're asking you to do what what you have done is you have unplugged your TCM and you have hooked up your meter we're measuring ohms we got one lead right here and then the other ones going to ground we're just checking to see if there is a path for the meter to talk understandably that harness is going to have some resistance this solenoid here is going to have some resistance but ultimately if it was reading infinite then possibility of this harness being open exists that's a pretty cool quick check so the check is it's telling you to look for is the resistance one mega ohm or more oh I see what they did and I don't like it huh open that link up show it to me I see what those guys did tricky little fools alright so they're telling you again if we had our meter and we were gonna measure here on this side of the plug and we're gonna go to ground that it's looking for a resistance reading greater than one mega ohm so it would actually tell you high resistance is okay because in that step they all they cared about was if you have a short to ground that's all they cared about and I I would contest that as a technician as an engineer who wrote the instructions I get what they're trying to do now okay they're just trying to have you take little pieces little little bites out of this but I think as a technician you're smart enough to understand if I was to say measure the resistance and you should have a measurement one mega ohm but not to exceed uh, infinite ohms or out of limits you know what I'm trying to say is your meter will connect and it will give you a value I don't like what they did there I really don't like what they did there and I think it would have been better to just have them say put your meter in here clip at the ground and get a resistance reading and then apply that resistance reading to a chart obviously if you were less than one mega ohm, that's still that's one mega ohm is pretty damn high but I think they're underestimating <laughs> their wiring harnesses having a lot of loads in them ah you know I'm gonna hang up my head on this one I'm gonna hang up my head on this one because I'm just so mad at it this is such a stupid step this is a really bad step. I don't like it at all. Oh, that, that step makes me angry. So, step number one makes me angry. I don't like it. Okay, step number two, check lockup duty solenoid. Measure the resistance between the transmission connector and the transmission body. The resistance approximately 13 ohms when engine is cold key turn there engine cold I like that a lot that is something that I can teach you if it opens this up perfect let me get my cram back out can I make my line smaller yes I can make my line smaller cool resistance now it's telling us to go from here unplug this connector go through the transmission harness okay that's the other side of this connector that it plugs into and then go to ground and it wants to see something 
Okay, that is the something symbol of 13 ohms. Very important that it tell you to make sure that the engine is cold. I would also like to have seen a step in there that said, make sure your transmission's cold, because I've seen transmissions retain a ton of heat. Ultimately, what you have to understand is, let me get rid of this. Let me draw you a simple picture here. Basic graph, nothing's really to scale, but if over here is temp, and over here is resistance, okay, as the as I take resistance readings and the temperature is increasing, the resistance will also increase. Now, is it going to be a nice linear path like that? Eh, probably not. There's a lot of factors to take into play. This is kind of a can of worms discussion, but this is where you have to start going off of not your gut, but your technical experience and understanding the how thick the wire your measuring is what the wire is made out of, copper or aluminum, any amounts of corrosion, if it's a component, if there's a solenoid, you're also taking into account on the resistance measurement. But what they told us was, if this is cold, right about here, we should get 13 ohms. And let's just say if it was hot, we might have... 25. This is working theory right here. You see where I'm going with that? Does that mean that you should take this measurement on a hot system? No. You should tell the customer to go take five, go get some dinner, maybe come back tomorrow, and do this with a cold engine. This is just me uh, talking right now. What else do we got on here? Mm-hmm. Gives us another harness, disconnect the control valve connector, measure the resistance between the transmission connector and the transmission body. Yeah, it's just again, it's looking for opens and shorts. So if you're, if you understand how to use a voltmeter and you understand how to use a, an, uh, the ohm meter function, then you know what these steps are asking you to do. Alright, they're asking you to use your meter and everything is going to ground at one point okay you got one lead going to ground and it's just asking you to say hey check it here make sure all this is good then come over here make sure all this is good so that's that's all they're really doing let's get back on track I wish there's some good G was information. So whenever we do resistance checks, I always emphasize that you should be using a wiring harness adapter kit because you want to get a tight fit on all your connectors. You don't want anything wiggling around. And we have 8 ohms. So we're using an 8 mil. Taiwan JTC 1315 Check this out Okay 
right? Then we tap her around like so. See how it's got that bevel? So we're pushing forward. Push it back in. Very nice. Very nice. Gets around the corners very nice. And the handle is removable too. I think we have enough. One, two, three. Okay, we're going to use the silicone gasket remover, aka stool softener. I really like this stuff. You can get this at the parts store. I'm sorry, you can get this at our parts counter or you can buy it online. There's the SOA number. SOA 868 Victor Niner 175. The O'Reilly equivalent is just not as good. Let that sit for about 20 minutes. Come off smooth as butter. Brand new OEM control valve body 31706 Alpha Alpha 034. We're going to be using part number 31728 Alpha Alpha 120. You know, you might be asking yourself, hey, why aren't the filters on the outside? I remember canisters used to be on the outside. I want to change them. <laughs> well, I'll tell you why. Too many people who didn't know what they were doing changed those on the outside and they screwed up their transmissions and they tried to claim warranty. So now the manufacturers put them on the inside. Uh, so, yeah, when manufacturers take service procedures away from the common consumer, it's always because too many people who thought they knew what they were doing did it wrong. Ooh, got the beans on it. Do this without hurting my back. Okay, now we are going to disconnect our ball bunny. And get more oil on me. Yay. Only some of these bolts are coming out. Best way to figure out which bolts come out and which bolts don't come out is to look at our new one. probably going to be all the black ones, right? So, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. Yeah, like one, two, three, four. Alright, yeah, yeah. Looks like it's going to be all the black ones. And I think there's one not black one. All the bolts are out, it's just being held on by an o-ring tube. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
Gotta go back in. There's a little spout right here. We're gonna get on the other end of the waterfall. I just got a rocker. Oh, it's still got me in the face. It's for days. So don't even be one of those people who are like, I'm just gonna let it drip for the rest of the day and get all the stuff out. Folks, it will do this for like the next three days. Okay. Plunger is going to help pull this up. Oh. I also got to make sure my parking paw goes in that clip. Cockroach? Were you in there? Was that the problem? Where'd you come from? Perfect. All right, let's torque them down. That's there, it's up in there. Better make sure you install that. That'll be a bad day. Okay, a little lube on there.
dream. Be careful of your red rags. They love to get lint stuck up in there. Okay. Uh, uh. If you don't got your bolt handy, you better have somebody in shouting distance. We are committed. Back my second. Okay, so it's time to put in our fluid into the transmission. We got a lot of fluid to put in, probably about eight or 10 quarts of fluid. So we do have a machine to do it here at my shop. It's gonna make it really quick. If you don't, then you're gonna have to use one of these giant pumps. It'll make a little bit of a mess. I'm gonna use the machine. Okay, now we got it spilling out. We're going to temporarily just put our plug in. And we can start the car. Alright, now just because I can get to it, I do want to make sure this car breathes with a good throttle body and it gets a good relearn. It is very important all otherwise this car is just gonna be falling on its face for the next thousand miles. Oh yeah that's that's pretty shattery. Gonna be using CRT intake valve turbo cleaner. Really really good stuff. Nylon brush hooked up to a low speed drill. Not applying a lot of pressure.
beware the fumes. Now we can add some speed. That's why you want to. That's why you want to watch the speed. It'll walk away from you. I like to leave things better than the way I found it. America, yes. System selection this time. TCM. Confirm, confirm. 
I want to read data stream. I want my ATF temp, and that's it right now. 91 degrees, perfect. I need to get it up to about 120 to perform my relearn. Just give it as much clean as I can and let it force out as much dirty as I can. Click. Alright. We're in the car. Vehicle's lifted. ATF temps 104 degrees. We're going to back out of our data log. And we're going to go to special function. And we're going to go to AT learning mode. Now I do want to point out one thing. In the service manual it does tell you that you should do an AT learning mode clear. And you should do a rear differential inspection mode. I'm going to tell you that you only have to do a rear differential inspection mode if you replace the rear differential. Because you're going to run into a lot of... Uh, delays in trying to get your vehicle out doing a rear differential inspection mode if you're working on a really old car. Um, one is uh, <laughs> mm. the rear differential mode requires that both wheels spin at the same time and it's measured by the wheel speed sensors and if there's any kind of drag on those wheels then that open differential is going to send the power to the other wheel. Meaning that if you have any kind of rust on those rotors, the uh, if you have any kind of rust on those rotors, then that one wheel is going to grab and the other wheel is going to spin faster and then you're going to fail and you're never going to pass until you pull those wheels off and you scuff those rotors down. So if you got a brake malfunction in the back or if you have anything wrong that wasn't related to this transmission problem you're gonna lose a lot of time so if you don't know that going in you're screwed so I just tell people like just avoid going down that pitfall so let's just go in the AT learning mode right now okay AT learning mode turn off headlamps air conditioner rear defogger switches you want to turn off all the loads on the vehicle confirm Okay, lift up vehicle, put on parking brake. I did put on parking brake. I might have missed a message in my lecture. This is the first time using the Think Diag 2. Turn off ignition switch. So, I'm not going to lecture this time. I'm going to get through it, start the engine, confirm, depress the brake pedal. Once engine in, the speed gets stabilized. After starting the engine, select D-range, fully depress brake pedal, keep pressing, preparing ET learning. AT learning mode, release brake pedal. Released brake pedal, all wheel drive control, learning in process. Fully depressed brake pedal and keep pressing. Wow, this is not how the scan tool does it. Fully depressed brake pedal and keep pressing, shift control, learning in process. Fully depressed brake pedal, keep, shift, select to reverse. There's definitely some translation problems here. Fully depressed brake pedal, keep pressing, shift, control, system learning and process. I'm dehydrated so my words are slurring. Select neutral. Okay, this is a good sign. This is a good sign.
this is a very good sign. AT learning normally ended. Yes. Those are good words. Take my parking brake off. Whew! I'm sweating. I need some AC, folks. I hope this car has some AC. Put it in park. Get this car off a lift. We need to go do the last test. Read data stream. Seatbelts on. Oh, this car smells gross with fragrances. Sorry, folks, I'm not a fragrance person. Oh, what time was it? 1:41. Let me set that Glock. Oh, the buttons are sticky. I can't set it. That person's always going to be late for work. up this time. This is the last video I had on. Okay. Okay. Always make sure you reinitialize everything after disconnecting the battery. The customers get mad. So the last step in working on a transmission, especially after doing a relearn on the Subarus, so we have to do what's called a torque converter relearn now I mentioned in the service manual this is one of our little tricks so we're gonna drive until we get lock up and then we're gonna coast until it unlocks and we come to a nice comfortable stop and we'll accelerate again Get up to about 30, coast, and wait for it to completely unlock. Now a car's gonna right, come to an easy stop. And you don't have to do this sequentially you know obviously if you got somebody coming up behind you and you got to get out of the way get out of the way so right now I just got to get out of the way of traffic a couple cars showed up behind me the object of the objective of doing this torque converter relearn is to just here's a good path all right nobody behind me here we go 99 percent 30 miles an hour the objective of doing this is to accelerate the relearn process algorithm inside the tcm and it's to um, help the customer have an enjoyable experience after the repair there we go zero and we can come to a comfy stop so they say just three times all you need and then after that just go put a couple miles on it drive it normally and make sure there's no hiccups Well, 
folks, I want to thank you for helping me with this diagnosis and repair. It was great having you along. If you leave anything in the comments, I'll be sure to leave a reply. If you have any questions, I'll be sure to answer them. And uh, liking and subscribing, as always, really helps me make better content. Let me know what else you want to see. I have terabits of video to edit. I have things related to tool reviews, diagnosis, basic repairs, engine builds, you name it. So just tell me what your focused your focuses are and I'll pick and choose out of the files. Again,